Time for part 3 of my Hard Gold Soul Silver review and what I was about to say before I got caught up by that phone call is that well, the swarms are back in Hard Gold and Soul Silver and it's not exactly the same as in Gold Silver Crystal and it's not the WHAT?! A level 9 Hoppit?! Are you shitting me? She didn't even upgrade her roster since I fought her? What kind of experience does a level 9 Hoppit give at that point of the game? What a weak trainer! If she didn't give out items, I would delete her from my phone book pronto. And in fact, I think I might even do that before heading to uh, Victory Road because there are a lot of trainers on routes 26 and 27 that uh, can give you their phone number and you get rematches from them with Pokemon in the high 30s, NOT LEVEL 9! Oh, she's got a Bulbasaur and it's level 12. Well, that is the weakest rematch team I have ever seen! But, what was I talking about? Swarms! Oh yeah, yeah, swarms. They're back and they're, they're not quite as they were in Gold, Silver, Crystal, but not quite as they are in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum either. It's like a twisted hybrid of the two. There is a swarm every day, and unlike in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, you can't have swarms in every route in the game. It's just in a few specific places. And why am I saying that it's a twisted hybrid? It's because... To find out which swarm you have today, you have to listen to the shittiest radio show in the world. That's right, they gave they gave a use to that piece of shit program, but it's still just as unbearable to listen to, I bet. I wonder if, if we can at least find what the swarm of the day is right away, instead of having to go through 10 minutes of, you know, Rattata can be found on Route 29. Rattata is so mischievously delicious with ketchup! Yeah, and as you might guess, uh, among the swarm Pokémon are the usual suspects like Yanma and Dunsparce, but there are a few additions among the Hoenn and Sinnoh Pokémon after you get the National Dex. Stuff like uh, Swablu, Whiskash, but you might be surprised to learn that there are actually... Um, wait, can I have... Um, a fishing rod or something? Usually the fishing gurus are all about fishing, not telling game lore. Come on, give me that! Okay, you, you can catch light, Lightly Magikarp there with uh, perhaps a super rod? No, he doesn't even give me a super rod? Oh, I think I get it, because I saw in the Poké Art that there are supposed to be trainers in this place, but right now there don't seem to be any, so what I think I have to do is that I have to beat uh, the Mahogany base, and then there will be trainer... trainers, sorry, and uh, not just one trainer, a few of them, and um, the, the fishing guru is going to give me a... Uh, a fishing rod, probably the super rod, because I think I had the other two. So, yeah, as I was about to say, among the swarm Pokémon, there are some version exclusives. Oh yeah, this wasn't obvious at all. There's a max potion right there. And, um, yeah, the swarm version exclusives. You've got Sableye, Mawile, Gulpin, and Baltoy. Those are the confirmed ones so far. So we're going to head to the center of the lake to catch a free shiny Gyarados. So, um, we're going to go back into the story soon, so my final verdict is Hard Gold and Soul Silver a Platinum Killer? Yeah, not quite, I'd have to say, because as I said, there are a few things missing, like the Poké Radar, the Versus Seeker, the Underground, all of which made um, Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum very, very enjoyable. And, well, to be honest, that, that I'm not saying that Hard Gold and Soul Silver are bad. In fact, they're so good that it's probably the best they could have possibly made them. They could have just sat on their asses, just revamped the graphics of Gold, Silver, Crystal, exactly like they did with Fire Red and Leaf Green, add a few meaningless extras here and there and be done with it. But no, they pulled out all the stops to make uh, such a good game, I'm honestly surprised. I was, I was absolutely certain that, oh, this isn't a, a shiny Gyarados. What the hell happened? What happened to my shiny? What? I, I just got robbed of a shiny Gyarados or something? What's happening? Oh, it's still there. So, oh, 
and here I thought <laughs> I, I completely missed it and I was robbed by the game or something. So it's time to catch ourselves a shiny Gyarados, and I put Gengar as my lead for this battle, and as you might guess, I'm not even going to try Thunder, it's going to obliterate it ten times over. I am going to Hypnosis it first, of course, but after that I'm going to try a neutral Ice Punch, and see how many of them it can take. My money's on... Only one, maybe two? Let's see. Yep, it can take a second one and it's going to be in the red, which is a perfect scenario, obviously. And, of course, as you might imagine, another upgrade Hard Gold and Soul Silver does over this is that Gyarados is actually good in, the, in that generation, so there's no more forcing Gyarados to carry around special attacks because that's all it has. It can now... Oh, come on, come on! Oh, man, that w Oh, shoot, it was so close to... Try... Shit! It was so close to... Well, the good news is that it has a much higher catch rate than any legendary, so the painstaking difficulties of having to find and catch Raikou and Entei, well, this isn't the same thing at all. It appears right in the middle of the lake, you can't miss it, and you don't have to run around, wait six or seven random battles just for them to run away, like Raikou did twice! And as I said before, I didn't... Um, well, I did record it, but I deleted the files because it was seven minutes of nothing. So, right here, if it can only stay in the ball, please, pretty please, Gyarados! Oh, sh oh, Leer, I was expecting bite or something. Does it have bite? I didn't check, honestly. It knows this. Oh, it missed. That's not good. Trash. Well, it's a bit better since Gengar is immune to trash and all, and I think... I'm not sure, but... Um, it's not going to have any self-inflicted confusion if trash goes straight through a ghost. So let's try another Pokeball. Hopefully it's going to go better. Three! Here we go! We got a shiny Gyarados. Too bad it's a complete piece of shit that is not a fine addition to my team. Yeah, it's atrocious, alright. Atrocious! Can't use physical attacks at all outside of return and body slam if you trade it to red, blue, and yellow and back. But other than that, okay, so we obtained a red scale and now time for the next story event. And this is a familiar figure. We got here Lance, previously the last member of the Elite Four, now it's champion. Yeah, I just spoiled it for you. And this starts a tradition uh, in the Pokemon series of, you know, having a recurring character in the game turning out to be the champion, like, you know, you got Steven Wallace and Cynthia after him. And yeah, he gives you the rundown. There's a rocket base in Mahogany that uses radio wave to force the Magikarps in the Lake of Rage to evolve, because Magikarps have no value whatsoever, whereas Gyarados are uber powerful. Uh, well, this is in game lore in this generation because, as I've said several times so far, Gyarados is a piece of shit in Generation 2. So, we are going to explore the... the mahogany base of the rockets next time, and there are a few subjects that I haven't covered yet about Hard Gold and Soul Silver, one of them being the Safari Zone, but Serebi still hasn't figured out everything about the Safari Zone, so maybe it's best to wait a little longer, but not too much longer. You might see a new video tomorrow where I talk about it or something tomorrow, Friday, whenever. And there's also the competitive implications of um, the, the release of Hard Gold and Soul Silver. There are a few level up moves, a few egg moves, and move tutors all across the board to make a brand new experience. And I'll be talking about this new experience next time. <laughs>